This Lightroom tutorial will be a lot of fun. By using just a bunch of very basic Lightroom adjustments, we are going to turn this flat contrastless image into this final photo. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now, let's begin. So this is the RAW file we are working on. There are quite a few visible sensor spots throughout the image, but I will be removing them towards the end of the image. So that's a little bonus tutorial. First, however, I want to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. And I'm doing this because I simply want to raise the saturation. Originally, I was hoping for some sunlight hitting the field in the foreground while I have a dark sky in the back. However, the sunlight never made it out of the clouds. So we need to change that with Lightroom. Luckily for us, that's pretty easy. So I want to start this by simply dropping the exposure a little bit, making the base image darker. And I'm also going to drop the vibrance a little bit, just right about here. And we can also work on the white balance, bringing up the temperature in order to kind of neutralize the color cast that's going on, making the whole image a little bit warmer, just like this. And that's all we need to do for the basic adjustments. Now it's still looking super flat, but we want to change that by making use of Lightroom's masking tool. So let's open up the masking panel and let's work our way through this image step by step. The first thing I want to change is the sky. I want to make it look a little more dramatic, get out more details of the clouds and introduce more saturation as well. So for this image, selecting the sky is pretty easy. All we need to do is click on the sky mask and Lightroom will do that for us. So what I want to do with the sky is to first pump up the contrast. This will make the clouds pop. We can further increase this effect by bringing down the shadows and we could even drop the blacks. Now I like the warmer color tone on the foreground. I don't like it that much on the sky. So what I want to do to change that is to simply bring down the temperature, making the sky a little colder this way. And finally, let's go down into the effects tab and bring up the clarity. Again, this just makes the clouds pop as you can see as I raise that slider. At the same time, I kind of want to make everything a little softer. So I'm going to bring down the texture and this really helps introducing a soft look to those clouds up in the sky. Wonderful. So after applying this mask, what I'm noticing is the horizon is getting a little bit too dark, but we can fix that as well. Let's create another sky selection mask. And I want to subtract a linear gradient from this sky selection going from the top down. So we only have the horizon level selected of this image, just like this. Now what I want to do to make this area brighter is to simply raise the exposure. This will help introducing some more interesting light to the scene as we are brightening up that part of the sky. Okay, that looks great. I'm quite happy with the sky for now, so let's work on the foreground, because the foreground is still lacking a lot of contrast and we can do some quite impressive things here. So again, I am starting with the sky selection. This might seem a bit weird, but don't worry. We want to click on invert and that way we get a perfect selection for the foreground. Now I don't want to select all the landscape in the foreground. Again, I'm making use of the subtract function, I'm going to use a linear gradient and just getting rid of the top part of that selection right here. This is looking pretty good. And what I want to do with the landscape in the foreground, let's start by simply raising the exposure. And this will make it seem like the sunlight is shining right down on this field. We can also bring up the highlights for some more contrast and even the whites if we want. So this instantly makes this image so much better. Let's also bring up the temperature to give this field more of a golden hour warmth effect on top. Just going to add a subtle amount. I don't want to overdo it, but this looks really good. So by just using a targeted mask like this, we changed the whole image completely. However, we can improve this light effect even more. For that, let us create another linear gradient going up from the bottom part like this. 
And I want to use this linear gradient to add a shadow to the light in the foreground. And all I need to do here is to simply bring down the exposure again. Just like this, we can adjust the size a bit, play around with this light effect we want to create. But I think this looks great. So again, let me turn off the mask so you can see the difference from before to after. So creating the shadow adds a very nice depth effect for this shot, which really works great. Now I'm super happy with the foreground. I do want to take another look at the sky. I do think I want to add more contrast using a linear gradient for the top half of the sky like this. And let's see, I want to bring up the contrast. I'm going to raise it a lot actually. And raising the contrast, as you can see, has a strange effect on the color. So we want to bring down the saturation to counter that effect. Perfect. Now let me create one more linear gradient for the top right part of the sky like this. I do think I want to just bring up the highlights. I have a feeling this just looks better this way. I also want to bring up the whites, but I think that's pretty much it for all the masking that's going on in this image. So let me show you the complete transformation. This was our image with just a bunch of very basic adjustments. Here is the image with the masks applied. The image has a lot more depth now thanks to the masks and this light effect in the foreground works really, really well. Now we can continue doing a little bit of color grading and some further adjustments. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. And I do think I'm gonna bring up the yellow saturation notch as well as the green tones. But the more interesting thing comes in the luminance step because here we can make use of these sliders to improve that manipulated light effect even more. For this particular image means we can bring up the yellow and green luminance sliders to make the field in the foreground even brighter if we want. So let's raise the luminance for the yellow tones and the green tones to introduce more brightness in the grass in the foreground. We can push that a step further by bringing down the blue luminance, which will make the sky darker and in turn just gives us some more overall contrast. Wonderful. And finally, we can head into the details tab to sharpen this image real quick. Perfect. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial about manipulating the light of a boring flat image like this. However, due to the editing, we now have a ton of visible sensor spots, so I want to fix them. I'm doing this in Lightroom just to show you the process of doing this. Usually I'm using Photoshop because it's way quicker, but let's do this. I want to go on the healing tool and here we want to choose the heal brush. Now some of these sensor spots are really, really obvious, so we can fix them right away by just painting over them. Usually if you're shooting images, your images should not look like this. I did switch the lenses on my camera quite a few times over the past few weeks, so there's quite a big accumulation of sensor dust, as you can see. I really need to clean the camera sensor as soon as possible. Okay, so this is looking much cleaner already, but there's a big chance we are missing some of the less obvious sensor spots. To find those, we, all we need to do is to click on that Visualize Spots checkbox. And clicking on it, you, Lightroom will make the sensor spots way more visible and we can just work our way through the image. Okay, this looks so much cleaner. Let's see how this looks with the natural color tones. Much, much better. So at this point, I think the image lacks a little bit of contrast when taking a look at the histogram. I do want to change that real quick. So let's go in the tone curve and just add a simple S curve to the image. This will improve the image look overall quite a bit, I think, but that's about it for this Lightroom tutorial. All I'm going to do now is to clean up those trees on the left side, which, I'm be, which I will be doing in Photoshop, but that's not that interesting. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.